Time to talk non-Turkey Turkey Turkey Day here on the Exam Room Podcast brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. And the question today is this, what do you do to have a vegan Thanksgiving that can satisfy everybody, right? Because you know that there are some turkey lovers in your life that are coming over for dinner, but you yourself are eating vegan and now you're kind of in a quandary. What do I serve them? Well, we're going to find out because today we have with us somebody who knows all about taking those classics and veganizing them and making them as scrumptious as ever. He is known as the Vegan Roadie. He is my colleague and now a new friend, Mr. Dustin Harder. Welcome to the exam room, my friend. It is so good to see you here. Hello, good, sir. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me back. And hello to you and a happy Thanksgiving to you, good sir. I love that. Um, (laughs) So uh, congratulations, by the way, on the release of the new book, Epic Vegan, Quick and Easy. I'm sure a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about today, uh, some of those recipes may even be in the book. Yeah, well, some, some little bits and bobs here and there, yeah. Bits and bobs, bits and bobs. I like that. Let's have some fun though. All right. Um, I was trying to think about, well, what dishes do I want to ask him about for Thanksgiving? Could we go down the list and just do the classic staples? It's like, well, of course we could. But then I stumbled across, God bless the good folks at Zapia.com, who have come up with a list of the most popular Thanksgiving side dishes for every single state. How cool is that? That's amazing. I can't wait to hear this. (laughs) <laughs> we have geographic yum yumness. Um, so I matter of fact, I, I've got the list right here. Let me pull it up so you know that I'm telling the truth. There it is. Zippy at the most popular Thanksgiving side in every state. And spoiler, mashed potatoes are still the best. Uh, yeah, man, uh, right off the top. Mashed potatoes, absolutely no Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving dinner is going to be complete without them. That has to be among the easiest recipes to go ahead and make vegan. It's so easy. It's just a matter of, you know, almost everyone uses butter and milk in their mashed potatoes. So it's really just a matter of swapping out the uh, the butter. You find some vegan butter, which is readily available everywhere these days. So many companies are making it. So swap the butter out with vegan butter and use a plant-based milk for it. And for people who are really going down the health path, I think even on that list we saw there's a cauliflower uh, potato mashed potato in there. So a combination of the two, right? But I've actually been working on a version where you can omit the butter and milk completely and you can do sort of a mixture of cauliflower, like a cauliflower puree with nutritional yeast and it tastes a little bit like butter if you really want to go down the healthy road with it. But if you're really just trying to do that easy swap to keep everyone happy at the table, I think swapping out for vegan butter and plant-based milk is the easiest road to go. The way that they came up with these rankings, Dustin, was actually quite ingenious. It's not like they spent millions of hours on the phone you know, doing surveys. What they did was they went to Google and they analyzed search trends around the holidays. Ah. And so here we have our list. So I was like, yeah, that's that's modern ingeniousness right yeah. there. Yeah, look at technology. Uh, Alaska, number one, I would think that this one is pretty easy to make vegan, stuffed mushrooms. Oh, yeah, easy. I mean, it all depends on what you're stuffing it, right? But that can easily be done with maybe like a tofu mixture, some nutritional yeast. And I think I've even had some like quinoa stuffed mushrooms before. And that's one of those ones. Google, you mentioned it already. Google is like the world's best friend when it comes to vegan re- vegan recipes these days. You can just Google vegan stuffed mushrooms and you're going to come up with something. And if, it's, if we're stuffing it with cheese, there's a lot of cheese, plant-based cheese companies out there these days that are, are making a lot of great products. Uh, Some with very minimal ingredients as well. So there's lots of great options in terms of substituting that out if you really want to go that road too. No doubt. And if you dig deep enough, I know that there's a a lot of you who are hearing this or watching this right now who are also like really trying to keep the oil to a minimum. A lot of these plant-based cheeses, when you look at them, um, don't really use a whole heck of a lot, Mm -hmm. if any at all. So you just have to kind of do your your due diligence, flip over the package and see what's in there um, and go with the healthiest option that you feel is right for you. But uh, again, kind of like what we were talking about at the top of the show, so many options these days. So many Um, options. And I'll shout out Miyoko Shinner again, actually. Her last book, The Homemade Vegan Pantry, she's got oil-free cheeses in there. She's got the option to go both ways with it. So she's really hooking us up when it comes to Uh, some staple recipes, it seems. 
She's so cool. I, I need to get her back on the show. It has yes. been too long. Her story is amazing. Uh, let's uh, hop down now to uh, the South, Alabama, sweet potato casserole. This is another one that shouldn't be too challenging, right? No, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, really. I mean, when you think of the holidays, a lot of cream and butter and milk gets used, and it's really just taking those things and using the plant-based versions. Even silk has a, uh, a heavy cream these days. If you really need to go the heavy cream route, which I've found in recipes that call for that, you can kind of take it out and use maybe just like a little bit of less of whatever the amount is of a plant-based milk, and sometimes you're okay. You can make a heavy cream with cashews. You can make a heavy cream with silk and tofu. So there's a lot of different routes to go, but ultimately that sort of sweet potato casserole is going to be subbing out the same things, butter and milk probably. I would think so. Uh, now let's head down to uh, Arkansas. So I'm not sure that I would call gravy a side, but nonetheless, Arkansas's favorite side is white gravy. Um, gravy oh. is something that's easy enough to keep it plant-based, right? Yeah, absolutely. That white gravy is usually a milk base of some sort. So even if you didn't look up vegan white gravy, if you Googled white gravy recipe and you see that it calls for XYZ of milk, you can just replace that with plant-based milk. All right. So uh, we said at the top that mashed potatoes were the most popular side. Look at this. Arizona, California, Colorado, Connecticut, all mashed potato lovers right there. And then, get you, get to, and then you get to Delaware, cauliflower mashed potatoes. So swapping out, I guess, the, the regular russet for some cauliflower? I love, yeah, well, cauliflower, you can do all cauliflower, or sometimes you can do a mixture of both of them. So you can get, still sort of get that uh, texture of the mashed potato in there. It's a little, uh, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Grainy is not the right word, but if you do the uh, just cauliflower, it's still delicious, it's still tasty, but it doesn't quite hold the structure that the potato does. So sometimes people do a mixture of potatoes and cauliflower, and sometimes people just do straight up cauliflower. Now, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on Florida because they're, they've got rolls. And so, I mean, that's easy enough. Uh, Georgia, collard greens. Let's talk about this because I was raised in the South and yeah. traditionally you can't have collard greens without the ham hock in there, right? So you got to put the ham hock in there and even some bits of ham on top of that, some vinegar and just a whole truckload of salt. So if you want to make something for your guests, collard greens that are healthier and don't have that ham hock in there, how would you go about keeping that flavor without the pork? I would use smoked paprika or liquid smoke, probably smoked paprika. I tend to lean towards that a little more. And I find that uh, the liquid smoke to me has a little too much of an artificial taste to it. Uh, but smoked paprika, a little bit of that goes a long way. Mix it in when you're steaming those greens and it'll, it'll be absolutely delicious with a little veggie broth. Um, and you know, all the things like you say, salt is still a factor in here. If you're cutting back on it, you can cut back on it. The smoked paprika sort of makes up for some flavor in there. I'll never forget, I, my, my dad's from Alabama and I was visiting for an Easter and my aunt was like, well, I made you some collard greens. And I was like, <laughs> great, so there's no, and she goes, well, I use chicken broth. And I was like, I don't know how to politely get around this right now. So we oh, all okay. have that moment, right? In family where that kind of happens. But uh, it, it's uh, it's an easy swap and just make sure you're using vegetable broth instead of chicken broth. Oh, that's such an awkward conversation, isn't it? Yeah, I get she that was question trying so, so hard too. She was trying so hard, so I really I appreciated it. I know. Eh, what, what, what do you do? What do you do? Well-intentioned. All right. Um, so Hawaii, also a mashed potato state. Uh, Iowa, green beans. Now, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're not necessarily talking about just run run of the mill green beans. When I think Thanksgiving to me and green beans, it's got to be that green bean casserole. Sure. How would you do it uh, plant based without any of the dairy that's traditionally in there? Yeah, a lot of the time it's a cream of mushroom soup that makes the base of it. So you can make a base with a uh, like a mushroom gravy base essentially, and then you're going to mix the green beans into that. And then usually the fried onions that you traditionally get are vegan. And then some supermarkets like Kroger and Sprouts have a gluten-free version if you need a gluten-free fried onion. Uh, but you mix those right into it like you normally would and then bake it off. We actually have a recipe for that that's being tested right now. It won't be up for Thanksgiving, but it will be up for Christmas at uh, universalmeals.org. 
Hey, I like that. I love the fact that you're you're t testing these recipes. Um, I would like to offer my services uh, for Absolutely. testing. Absolutely. Yes, if you join need the them. party. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, yeah, free grub. I will certainly put you on the list. Oh, that, you are such a good gentleman. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad you came into my life. Um, by the way, uh, over at pcrm.org slash Thanksgiving, you can sign up there for a uh, Thanksgiving e-cookbook. You got all kinds of recipes. I think there's like 20 some odd recipes in there. You were just talking about like a, a mushroom, a cream of mushroom, but there's also a killer recipe in there for a mushroom bisque and mushroom nice. gravy. Um, oh, perfect. Both yeah, really healthy options uh, that no doubt will be cr crowd pleasers. Um, Idaho side salad. Right. What? You, huh. Okay. Hold on. How how is Idaho the potato, not the potato state? Right. Capital. I, I mean, come on, come on, Idaho. That's you amazing. Blow my mind. They um, must not look it up because they've just been making it forever. So they're like, we don't have to look up mashed potatoes. We need to look up salad. So they're googling the salad. Oh, that's wild. That's wild. Uh, Indiana, green beans. Uh, Kansas is creamed corn. So yeah, I haven't, honestly, Dustin, I have not seen a vegan recipe for a creamed corn. I would imagine kind of in the same way you were talking about cream of mushroom, you can do something like that, correct? Yeah, it, it's uh, with the cream corn, I think I, I would almost make it because uh, I've done like a, a cream corn sort of bisque before, but I think I would I would cook the corn however I needed to cook it. And then I think I would take some out and then put it in a blender and puree it up and then put that back with the corn, the whole pieces of corn. And that way you'd sort of create a cream that's made out of the whole food still. All right. So now we're going to head over to Kentucky. And this is an interesting one to me. Hash brown casserole. Number one, never heard about that for Thanksgiving. Number two, that screams breakfast to me, not dinner. It's what, very what funny. What do you think is going on? Well, it's funny because as you said this now, but it is in the breakfast chapter. In my new book, there is a, a potato hash brown. It's called the Little Sisters Cheesy Potatoes. <laughs> so it literally, and it is that, it's a, I'm from the Midwest originally, from Michigan, and there it is potatoes and cheese, and it's a casserole. And I think, and sometimes a cream of mushroom soup actually goes in there as well. So it could be that same thing, you're making mushroom gravy, mixing it in. Uh, you could get that silk heavy cream, or you could do a cashew cream sauce mixed in, or you can even do a sort of, uh, you can get a vegan sour cream from the store or make your own with silk and tofu. Uh, and you can mix that all in with the potatoes and then you bake it, anything like that. For the cheese, you could do a whole food cheese sauce. Uh, this, in my book, I do one made out of pumpkin puree. Um, or you can do one made out of squash if you want to, or you can get store-bought cheese if you want to go that route too. You know, we want to be able to suggest things for everybody, for people who are trying to go vegan quick and easy and for people who want to make everything from scratch, right? It just depends on where you are in life. You know, mm -hmm. I think that when you're first making that switch, you may be a little greener in the kitchen, pardon sure. the pun, but then as you advance, man, you, you get well seasoned and you can just do some magical things in there. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, look at the next state, uh, Louisiana, cornbread dressing. So we're not talking about actual oh. cornbread. We're talking about dressing here. Um, yeah. In that Thanksgiving e-cookbook I was just talking about, there's a wonderful recipe for cornbread muffins. This has to also be one of those dishes that easy, easy enough, right, to, to take out all of the animal products. Yeah, I mean, really, we're just talking about putting in a vegan cornbread in there. So, I mean, you could even take that muffin recipe make those muffins and then cut all that up, maybe toast the muffin pieces for a little bit. I mean, just if anyone's looking for a recipe, they can get that Thanksgiving ebook because that's free to everyone, isn't it? That we offer that for free. It is. It is indeed. Yeah. So yeah. So PC you can get that cornbread recipe and chop all that up, toast it, and then throw it into any sort of cornbread uh, dressing that you have. Yep. PCRM.org slash Thanksgiving is where you Perfect. go for that. Uh, all right. Next state on the list here is uh, Massachusetts, which is mashed potatoes. That's another potato one. Uh, <laughs> Maryland, where I am currently, collard greens. All right. Score one for Maryland. If we take out the ham hock, we're doing okay. All right. Uh, Maine. Maine is stuffing. I feel like we've already covered that. Uh, Michigan rolls covered that as well. Now, we have uh, two wild cards here that I did not see coming. Minnesota and Missouri both have charcuterie tray as their ah. favorite Thanksgiving side dish. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with a charcuterie tray, what in the world is that? 
Yeah, it's typically uh, a tray full of cured meats and cheeses and stuff like that. And it's, it's really easy to assemble a vegan version. And you can do it full of vegetables and fruits and nuts and seeds, or you can get some of the plant-based meats if you want to and toss those in there. Because again, we think about Thanksgiving, you're trying to please a whole array of people usually. So it's gonna please some people if you have whole food plant-based on there. It might please some others if you get some of the little pieces from the store and plug them in there. There's some great options. And I do have a recipe for one as well in my current book. It's the Easily Epic Charcuterie Board. And this just has like a hummus, a jam, uh, a cheese from scratch in here. And then it's got some uh, vegetables and uh, fruits on here and some crackers. You wanna have some crackers on there to sort of dip everything and put everything on. That's what it's all about. Uh, but it really is just about creating a board full of little treats for people really. Oh yeah, man. That sounds so good to me. Just load it up, you know, got so many different yeah. options on there. Uh, and plus that's, that's just a fun word to say, right? Like charcuterie. Yeah. Right? It's fun. And then the board is fun when it's done too. You have this great, beautiful thing to show your guests. <laughs> I can't even say it, man. It, it like, I just feel like I'm 10 years old again. Uh, Montana, <laughs> uh, turkey gravy. I kind of feel like we've covered the, the yeah, gravy. Yeah, mushroom gravy is a good one for that. Uh, North Carolina biscuits. So we've talked cornbread. Now let's talk biscuits. Uh, when my grandma would make them, there was eggs, there was butter, and there was milk in the biscuits. So can you still make a nice, delicious biscuit that has none of the above? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's You really only need the butter and the milk. So you can easily find your favorite recipe probably and substitute out whatever you need to. There's also great vegan egg replacers. You know, you can do a whole food replacement with chia seed or flax seed, uh, but you can get uh, certain companies just have egg replacers and it's a powder you mix with. And it, it's, it's a powder, but it's like starches essentially. And you mix it with some water and you set it aside for five minutes. It thickens up and it's an egg. So if you have a recipe that really calls for an egg, like a baked good specifically, you can go that route. Or you can go the more whole food route, as I mentioned. Um, I'm going to plug my book again. There's a recipe in here for <laughs> um, uh, uh, buttered biscuits and quick gravy. So, I mean, right here, you've got biscuits and gravy in there. And this is an awesome pan of biscuits where you just put the whole sheet, uh, uh, whole, the dough in the pan, basically bake them, and then you cut them out into biscuits. But for drop biscuits, look up your favorite recipe, some about plant-based milk and butter, however you need to do it, and you're all set. All right. So uh, I'm just going to let me highlight this one because, boy, this one shocked me. North Dakota fruit salad. Can you believe that? North Dakota, number one Thanksgiving side fruit salad. Hallelujah. Uh, you, you know, you know who's from North Dakota, right? Who's that? Dr. Barnard oh, is from yes, North Dakota. Yes, 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 yes. I think that maybe he had a little bit of influence a little something to do on there, this a little one. fruit salad. I think that, again, that probably takes us to them really knowing what they're doing at Thanksgiving. So they're looking up fruit salad to try and make sure they've got the fruit covered. Ah, good point. Uh, Nebraska, <laughs> crescent rolls. Uh, so I would think that huh. Nebraska would have something to do with corn, but not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, that's right? stereotyping. Um, New Hampshire, stuffing. Uh, we've covered that stuffed mushrooms for New Jersey side salad, New Mexico way to keep it healthy. New Mexico, right. uh, ne Nevada loves them. Some mashed potatoes, New York. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. This is a uh, very New York. My stepmother lives in New York has for many, many, many years. She cannot eat sweet potatoes without marshmallows. And, uh, back down here in the South, I know that one of the, uh, more popular dishes is sweet potatoes with about a gallon of caro syrup and then marshmallows on top of that. And then you put that in the oven and you bake it. And uh, in 20 minutes, you've got diabetes. So uh, um, I, I guess like that one, that's easy enough to, I, that really doesn't have anything to do with being vegan, right? I mean, you just... If yeah, you want no, something I mean, healthier, I mean, what are you going to do, right? Yeah, it's it's unfortunately one of those recipes where it's like, if you're going to go in, you're going to go in, I guess. And I, I mean, the only swap in terms of marshmallows is obviously Dandy's has been around for years making vegan marshmallows. And it's the perfect substitute for when you need a marshmallow. And Dandy's is becoming more and more available at different places. And Trader Joe's has a vegan marshmallow now. But in terms of swapping out something like that, I say swap out just having some a sweet potato mash, and that'll be sweet enough for you. But if you're really going to go for it, then there, there's the option for your marshmallow, I guess.
There you go. Uh, green beans, Ohio. Good choice. Baked potato in Oklahoma. Oregon, also on the mashed potato train. Pennsylvania loves them some stuff. And here we go. Rhode Island going the healthy route. Glazed carrots. Didn't see that one coming. That's oh, an interesting pick. Oh, nice. Delicious. What do you do with uh, your glazed carrots? Like, what do you use for a glaze? I mean, a little maple syrup. No, nothing too crazy. A little maple syrup. And then I actually just did an event with Chloe Coscarelli. And we we made these carrots and we topped them with a gremolata. And I can't suggest that enough. It's just a little parsley in a food processor with uh, lemon juice and a little garlic and a little dash of oil if you're on the oil train. If you're not, don't put the oil in. And then you process it all up and you just put a little dab on your carrots when they come out of the oven. So delicious. Gives it a nice little pop of flavor. All right, we're going to run down these last few states pretty quickly. Uh, South Carolina, also in to collard green. South Dakota, baked sweet potatoes. Tennessee, another hash brown casserole state. Texas, on board with creamed corn. Utah, it's rolls. Uh, Virginia and Vermont. These are the only two states, by the way, that have macaroni and cheese at the top of their list. I'm really surprised that only two states out of 50 went the mac and cheese route. I'm just so glad we finally, finally, finally heard it. I thought maybe it wasn't going to be on there. And for me, that's always a staple at any holiday meal. So I'm glad it was brought up by a couple of the states. I've seen some pretty bang up recipes for like a butternut squash mac and cheese that's on the healthier side. And then uh, obviously you can go crazy uh, if you open up the the culinary reigns a little bit more um, and you're just trying to do palate pleasers. So uh, just lots and lots and lots of options for uh, a vegan mac and cheese. I would think Truly. that a lot of those recipes, like some of them, you really won't even be able to tell a difference between traditional and the plant-based version. Yeah, no, I mean, it really is about having that creamy, luscious, cheesy sauce that goes with it. So it depends. A lot of people have different versions of mac and cheese. They want to have that baked mac and cheese. Some people are okay with tossing in the sauce, like however you want to do it. Um, there is a recipe on Universal Meals for anyone with allergies for a butternut queso right now. And that butternut queso, you can mix that with some pasta and you've got yourself a mac and cheese right there. So you're already avoiding the top nine allergies there. And uh, of course, animal products. All right, and then uh, let's round out this list. Washington roasted vegetables. Way to go, Washington. Uh, nice. Wisconsin, Wisconsin and Wyoming, both with baked potatoes. And West Virginia is opting for rolls. So there you go. There are your okay. 50 states. And uh, in the show description, you will find a link to the rankings if you're curious. Uh, what the heck? Um, the only I got one more for you before we wrap things up here, Dustin. Thank you so very much for being generous with your time. Yeah, um, sure. What did not make the list, though, was just plain old roasted Brussels sprouts. I eat them every day. They are my obsession. What is the best recipe that you know of for roasted Brussels sprouts? Before we get into my recipe, I want to know how you're eating them every day. Dude, it's so simple. It, it could not be any simpler. I, I blanch them just a, just a little bit Great. to soften them up. Then I will put them in the air fryer for like six minutes give them at like 375, just heat them up, get them a little bit more soft. And that's it, dude. Like I eat the, I just love the flavor of it with a little bit of hummus and I'm, I'm in heaven. Like it's so, so ridiculously simple that anybody could do it. Even my wife who I love to death, you know, never used her oven until she and I started dating. She <laughs> can do these uh, and knock this out of the park. Like it's so good. The Brussels sprout, it's just one of the more versatile vegetables. Yeah out there you know what i mean and it's it's really come up in the last few years here people are finally getting on board with the brussels sprouts train and i for me i really love a shaved brussels sprout and there's an easy way to do it you just chop off the ends cut them in half and put them in your food processor and pulse them and it looks like you spent hours shaving brussels sprouts which you didn't uh and then you can toss that with a little Dijon, a little uh, squeeze of lemon juice, a little salt and pepper, super tasty. Sear it up over on a skillet for uh, like three, four minutes, and it's it's just delicious. Breaks it down a little bit so it's easier to chew. Giddy up, man. Giddy up. Yes. That's why I love having you on, man. You just get the mouth watering, brother. I appreciate <laughs> you so much. <laughs> My pleasure. We've got that. That recipe is actually going to go up. So we're talking all these holiday recipes, and I want everybody to know at universalmeals.org, we are working on having a holiday recipe up for Christmas. So pumpkin pie, green bean casserole, the shaved Brussels sprouts, a chickpea roast, there's a mushroom gravy, a mashed potato, 
all of those things, a stuffing, it's going to be available uh, come December. So I wasn't able to really get it in order in time for Thanksgiving, but for the holidays after that, we've got some stuff over at universalmeals.org. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. And don't forget, happy to do a taste test. Oh, anytime, yeah, I'll put my friend. you on that list. I, I will take, I will take it, please. You are a good man. You are a good man. And I appreciate you more than you know. Uh, the book is Epic Vegan, Quick and Easy. Yes. His name is Dustin Harder. He is the vegan roadie. He is the man. Thank you so very much for being here, my friend, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Happy thanks living to you. And I appreciate you having me back on. If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.